Yeah, well, I think we're live now. <laughs> this is this is the third day that I've done these um these lockdown uh what would you say lockdown diaries. Some of you have become accustomed, I can see already to to joining me for this uh this 20 minutes of of levity from the increasingly um let's say um suffocating uh, stranglehold that the pandemic has has put on us so today i finally i finally got myself a pair of these um these hospital style gloves <laughs> i i have a whole actually my wife was nice enough to give me a whole box of these so I now have, I now have lots of gloves, although I'm not, um, there, there's a bit of a, there's a bit of a built-in problem with the, with the, with the glove thing, because, because even if you wear the gloves at my work, I have to sign in with my finger. So how do you do that when it's in a glove? Well, you take the glove off. But doesn't that defeat the whole purpose? Um, it's like a lot of things in life. This whole pandemic, it, it makes you think about all the weird, bizarre little things. Like, okay, so I got the gloves, but then I bought coffee. But this straw was exposed to the the germs of the manufacturing person. So, um and probably all of the people that may have purchased that coffee uh, today were next to the straw. So what's the point of the glove? It's just going to, it doesn't, the whole thing, the whole thing is, is a bit inexplicable, to be honest. I mean, I'll give you another example. I don't like riding in elevators. I, I, I find that elevators are sort of a, are a sort of kind of waiting to become metal tomb. So I don't like them. But the problem is, um, <laughs> the problem is this. If you're in the elevator during this pandemic, you have to be close to a person. So it adds to the overall... Um, the overall sense of, of uh, inability to social distance, right? I mean, the whole the whole concept that we've been sort of subjected to is this this concept of social distancing. And if you're in the elevator, uh, as you might need to be, for instance, I don't know if you even if you're in an apartment building or if if you're one of these essential workers as I am, um, then. You know we have a we have an issue. So I think that sometimes in the pursuit of trying to get everyone to properly socially distance, then sometimes we put people in situations that are uh, the opposite of what we'd actually want them to be in. So, for instance, where I live in Jerusalem, the restrictions now say. <laughs> You can't go into a forest like to go for a hike. Well, you would think that going for a hike very, very far into the forest would be a perfect example of, of social distancing, right? I mean, because the whole concept is that people should be like hermits or whatever and live in caves. Those people would be very safe. But, but under the lockdown regimes that we've been put under, you're not supposed to be hiking. You're supposed to stay at home. But you got to be careful of that elevator. I have found that one of the things, the few pleasures that that I have now uh, under the kind of uh, new way of life that we've become uh, accustomed to is that I luckily have obviously access to, to music and things, which is a lot more fun than the, the Netflix, the, the limited um, variety of Netflix things that we can watch. So today, for instance, because I was able to go to the office because I'm one of the, f the few uh, categories of what is called an essential worker, 
so I was still able to go to my office. I, I'm in an office building where there used to be like hundreds of people and now there's basically no one. So I'm here all by myself. So one of the great privileges is that I'm not only here by myself, but I can play music as, as loud as I want. I did discover something. I, I found on YouTube, they have a whole series of collections of the best, the best rock and roll songs from the Vietnam era. So you can sit. This one is a two and a half hour collection of Vietnam War songs. Now, these songs, I have to say, I really enjoy them. But as I've listened to them, um, and I think you'll find this if you go back to the Vietnam era. I could not foresee this thing happening to you. A lot of these songs, um, they're good, but they're a bit depressing. Now... Uh, I suppose, you know, that's because it was an era in which there was um, uncertainty and there was difficulty and these people were... I mean, I guess the songs were not written by people and that's mostly that had been in the conflict, but there was obviously social upheaval, uh, uncertainty, and so the, the songs seem to reflect, I think, some of that. And I think that we are living in an era now with this... Um, this pandemic, which which leads us to the same types of uncertainty and um, feelings of hopelessness, uh, suffocation, uh, and being stuck at home all the time under some sort of slavish uh, regime in which we're told that, uh, well, if you just stay home uh, forever, uh, things will be fine, which they probably won't, but okay. So I do think that you know, okay, in the 1960s, people were drafted and sent halfway around the world to uh, to slog through jungles. Well, at least Americans were. And so, well, we're in the opposite. We are sort of stuck at home, which is interesting to me because I spent the last five years uh, as in some bits doing conflict journalism or, or covering wars and refugees and, and killing and all of these things. So... I uh, I saw lots of things that were, uh, I guess, would be post traumatic or what have you. I will say that I, I it's hard. I don't know after this um, period of in kind of entombment, uh, what's it called, um, lockdown, social distan distancing thing that we've all been subjected to. I, I don't know exactly how we'll come out of that, but I suspect that some people. Uh, we'll come out of that with some forms of, of a kind of PTSD from it. And I would say that um, in some ways, the, the changes to our lives uh, are, I would say, I would say are in some ways more difficult or more complicated and bizarre than some of the things I saw over the years because uh, war is shocking and, and, and being a refugee and other things are shocking. But, but having your life slowly reduced... Um, down to kind of bare essentials, uh, you know, is um, is even more shocking. I mean, these days I don't I don't see any friends. I, I get up, I I have a family, so I get to see them, which is great. But then I drive to work. I I, I do my essential duty at this this beautiful exotic office. Which, by the way, if you are tuning in for the first time. I will give you a tour of the office, which is always the highlight of this 20 minutes of boredom. I, I have my, well, there's a door. I have my inspirational Chinese poster. I have my um, books, maps. I have a PhD in geography, so I like maps. I have a, a prayer rug. I have my, um, my fake grass. I have my riot control uh, helmet for... Uh, covering riots, and I have my beautiful wall of, of knickknacks and things that I've collected over the years, uh, which, if you've seen it before, it includes uh, flags from Kurdistan and Ukraine or patches and things from different places I've been. So, and then I have in this corner uh, old newspapers, uh, 
a, a doll, um, a small Humvee, a brick from a rack, things like that. So that's my, um, that is my amazing, beautiful, exotic office that I go to every day. Um, which actually the nice thing about this office is <laughs> it's kind of its own little quarantine ward because it has a window over there. And I can see people that go by, and I don't have to interact with them. So I am, I am fully, I am quarantined, I'm locked down, and, you know, that's just, that's, that's what we're supposed to be doing. I'm not staying at home, but I am, I am in a home-like environment. So, and according to the um, national plan, this is the greatest patriotic duty that we can do, is to, um kind of do nothing uh so um you know and just uh keep what they say keep calm and uh and carry on although i i do think that um you know we'll have to see how that works over the next uh the next few weeks because so far it's not uh it's not greatly enjoyable and does not uh, provide much uh, much exact hope and it's not entirely clear that the elected officials um, who have embarked upon this strategy have fully thought through uh, exactly where they are going to take it but nevertheless it's very important to be optimistic and happy and I'm going to go back now and do work, or what, what looks like work at least, and listen to some of this good rock and roll music from the, the Vietnam period. So I hope you all have a good day.